Hello and welcome to Coffee Milk. I'm Mark Laporte. And I'm Mitch DiPaolo. What's up, bud? How's your uh how was your New Year's Eve? Uh it was uh it was all right to say the least. Let's let's just say that I did not make it to the ball job. So we're just gonna end it there. It it, it was all right. It was it was good. Yeah, you're not looking too too good this morning. That's yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not with it today. I'm 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 pretty tired. I got enough energy for the both of us. So this episode I was kind of thinking about really how to start business, weird business ideas that have made people a good amount of money. I've seen a lot on Reddit uh, about a lot of young people, people your age, that just don't really know what to do. And everybody says the same thing, I have no skills, but everybody really has a skill, they just don't realize it. One thing I like to do is, you gotta work backwards. If you wanna start your own side hustle, and if you're trying to essentially make it your full-time income, think about how much you need a month if that's say I need five grand a month well if I were to start a, a service at agency if I get two clients at 2500 a month there you go you've covered it and you can do full-time what you got to do is what could make that amount of money if you're gonna sell a product you might have to sell a lot of products depending on how much margin you make per product if you sell a big item product um, I read one thing about a guy on Facebook he said what I do if I were to start my own thing is I would sell high-end watches say you look at these Facebook groups for buy and sell watches yeah one guy wants this watch and he's willing to pay up to 15 grand for it you find another guy who's willing to sell this Rolex or whatnot at 10 grand yeah boom you make the spread you just made five grand and that's what you needed so if you sell one watch like that a month you make your 10 grand it may not go that smoothly <laughs> it, there's a lot more work behind the scenes oh absolutely you, I, you'd have to be able to trust that person because I don't know anything about Rolexes. I don't know how easy they are to... I would assume they're pretty easy to bake. And if you don't yeah. know something and that guy just ships it off to the other yeah. guy, you're still out 10 grand. How do you get the 10 grand from that guy? Yeah, yeah. It's risky. Okay, so I had a, I had a similar idea. So last night I was thinking about all of the YouTube channels that are basically just doing affiliate marketing and reviews on certain products. Right now there's a lot of channels out on axes and wood-burning stoves and stuff like that because of winter and whatnot and things are kind of pretty crazy right now so there's a lot of channels doing that they'll just make a review on 10 best axes and then they'll leave a link to each axe and if anyone buys the axe they'll get a little kickback and they get the views on the video because a lot of people today like to do research on what they're buying because they want a good product so a good idea with affiliate marketing on youtube would be instead of picking um a niche kind of going all in on that niche saying like best um air Air conditioners like best cheap air conditioners or best heaters for the winter you can do product reviews of every category you need to do a deep dive and pick the best product of every niche maybe not every niche but pick pick a general like niche that's really big and just pick the best product of everyone and become that channel that is selling like high quality high price products that if you get a click from that or a sale from that review that you made you'll get a decent amount of kickback so it'll be worth your money creating youtube channel is probably the easiest thing to start too you just create a gmail account i think i have about 12 of them yeah and then you connect that to youtube boom you got a channel everybody and their brother has a smartphone so you can create content no matter where you are all you have to do is hit record maybe say some witty banter you can even mute the whole thing and then record over it later just uh you know dub it and you can edit for free in canva too oh canva does That's uh, a video good, editing uh, uh yeah uh, I didn't know that. For YouTube. Yep. Obviously, the hardest part in the beginning is to get in the search results. It's really hard for a new YouTube channel to rank for those things. So what I really recommend would be something like TubeBuddy or vidIQ. I'm sure you can get free trials of it. But just see how it all works. Certain tags that people look for. Yeah, I was just I was just thinking about tags. Um, When I uploaded my first two videos, I kind of went crazy on all of the things that you can input when you're uploading your video, like your tags.
tags, the video game title, the title and everything. I made sure it was like relevant to videos that were already ranking well. Right. So I found a little trick. Um, I don't know specifically how to do it, but you go to another person's YouTube video and you hit inspect element and then you can look at all of their tags and it'll show you a lot more than what you see in the description and what you can see on the regular screen. I have three extensions. I have TubeBuddy, I have VidIQ, and then I have something called Social Blade. Yeah, so if you don't want a bunch of ex extensions, like slowing down your computer, you can do it that way too. Well, I just turn them off. Oh yeah, that's true. I mean, it's just a nice thing to look at because it'll actually tell you their view count per month uh, on the video, and then I mm. believe view count per month on the channel. Oh, I gotta get subscribers. <laughs> and then below that with vidIQ, it'll give you all of the, the tags they're using. But something I found to be useful with that, at work we have a YouTube channel, it's a couple of years old. It's not doing too bad, it's about 55,000 subscribers. Ours is all about coach building, which is how to build cars and yeah. uh, car buying. Bodies. From there, uh, I'll look for certain tags, like how to use an English wheel or sheet metal for an English wheel, things like that. But then when I find a really good one, make that your title. Then you've got to make sure that that title is in the first 180 characters of the description. And then I also make that title my first tag. So I'm kind of hitting the tag first. It's in the description first, 180 characters, and then it's in the title. And that seems to help me rank rank better on certain things. Okay, because that's a good tip. We'll show how to build entire car bodies, and I guess unless you're a collector of that certain car, because we do rare cars, Duesenbergs, or just old Maseratis or the old Porsches, it's a very limited thing compared to the Fords. I mean, everybody and their mother loves Fords, so they want to redo the Model T or make a hot rod or something. But then we did a video on how to remove surface rust, and it was just a fluke. One week we didn't have any content to put out and my boss is just like he's 71 he's like no i don't really feel up to doing a video i gotta de-rust these panels and i said well why don't we do the video on that it took 15 minutes we just he was just showing what we use it was navel jelly or concrete prep and etch we were just seeing which one did better and that video outranked all our other videos within a month it, it went got over a hundred thousand views wow. and i, I want to say every day we probably get two thousand views from how to remove surface it seems like simple topics are kind of doing better in simple like things in general and that's the thing when you were talking about have you made shorts out of that video no you got to do that i know everybody that. telling me to do shorts and that's why i think a great agency would be to make shorts if you can do a 60 second video that's good enough for tiktok or instagram or youtube shorts you can just utilize that content across every social media thing see which one's working the best on what platform and then do more of that so with your niche you, you said go general i say go general on a certain thing you don't have to go general but i thought it was a good idea to find like a lot of people will pick a niche and do a bunch of different products in that niche like find the best product in each niche and be like the the channel that finds the best of everything i mean the best cat litter box the best uh the best water bottle the best everything right but if you were to go general in that in those things, I wouldn't just do videos on uh, the best water bottle and the best cat food dish. I would make it all about cats. So then you do the best yeah. of cat shirts, cat collars, cat treats, how to feed cats or what to feed cats. Mm -hmm. And then you can even go more into it, like how to groom a cat and how to bathe a cat, what products I use for shampoo or hypoallergenic this, because people people are in love with their pets, I would assume that would be just a top 10 niche to, to get into oh, yeah. anything for the pet lover. And then just pick out what pet you like. It. If you like a dog, fantastic. Well, then maybe you can even niche down to everything on if you have a Labrador or a Rottweiler, Golden Retriever, Pitbull. Hell, if I were a Pitbull owner, I would probably do why Pitbulls are so misunderstood. Do little shorts of that because people love to shove it in the face like, oh yeah, Pitbulls are these crazy animals and you can't control them but look at how mean this pit bull is to my eight month old and it's like you see a video of a pit bull just loving up on this this eight month old baby just an idea
<laughs> but with that, yes, you sign up for an Amazon affiliate program. And I, I want to say it's small, but you could even find individual pet creators or not pet creator, but collar manufacturers or something and just do a little ad for them. Maybe charge 500 or or $1,000, depending on how many people you have subscribed that watch your videos. If you want to do a YouTube channel like that, you totally could. Or just come out the other side and edit clips for people. The best thing I could probably recommend is find some big YouTuber. Try and find somebody that doesn't really have a good Instagram or TikTok or other social media presence and then try and create shorts for them and then show them the shorts. Just do it for them for free. Yeah, because there's so many people out there already who don't have like, YouTube shorts already made. But with the YouTube shorts, uh, another good thing is find a podcast. Find a podcast that has a decent following and then see if they're doing anything oh, on YouTube. Oh, yeah. I can guarantee you they're even, not. Even if you want to go a a uh, different direction with it, uh, I see people getting Joe Rogan's uh, podcasts and editing the clips into like a funny montage, like taking just two second clips of what they say and then just making a whole new video out of edited clips and it's hilarious. So if you took somebody's podcast and even if they didn't, if, if it was just all audio, just take it, add pictures or little uh, stock video clips behind it, or you could take your own video clips, but edit that stuff together in a good way, make sure it's attention grabbing, and you got a, a good agency. You could make a several grand a month, depending on how many clients you wanted. Oh yeah. One of my favorites is Tell Them Steve Dave, and I know they don't do these shorts, and I know I could go to them, create little shorts, because they have a lot of little gold nuggets in there. It's just, it's a comedy podcast, really, about three best friends, and they just shoot shit. But from there, I would take a couple of my favorite episodes, uh, and a lot of podcasts have subreddits. So people would even, you could just go there, search what's the best episodes, listen to one episode, pull out 15 or 30 second clips, create a little reel for it or a video, and then show them what's, what you can do. Then I'd go on Twitter, I'd DM them, or I'd email them, and say, hey, look, I, I created you a bunch of these. I'd love to do it for you, see if we're a good fit. Give them a price. I, I don't know what I would charge for something like that, but I'm sure you can go on Fiverr and see what people charge to edit. Yeah, Fiverr's great. You could even maybe try and hire a Fiverr guy to do it for you, see how good they are, just upsell it. Uh, if he charges you $10 to do it, charge $50 a video, boom, you make $40. The biggest thing with selling yourself, though, is don't sell yourself short. A buddy of mine owns an import-export business. He noticed when he would stock certain grocery stores with this product he, he brings okay. in, there's, uh, there was a woman there who sold olive oil, and I think she was selling her olive oil in a decent-sized jar, and it was about $2.49. And she noticed it was on the bottom shelf, and it wasn't making any sales. And my buddy just said, raise the price. If you look at all the other olive oils, they're selling between five ninety nine and up. And they sell out pretty quickly. So start raise your prices. So she rose her prices to $5.99. And now she can't keep up with the demand. So that's a big thing. People will look at your prices. I didn't kind of notice that on Fiverr. I was honestly, I started it like super cheap. And then I, pl I played around with my gig and my prices for selling the art and i actually got some like more messages and a lot more impressions on my gig i feel like you get what you pay for you could be the best person in the world at what your gig is but if you charge five dollars for it people might not go to you and yeah. they might go to the guy who's charging on be like oh this guy's real cheap it must just be like it might not be that good so i think the price determines yeah it's determines like having a mindset of oh i'm gonna make it really cheap and everyone's gonna buy it like doesn't always work exactly kind of weird it's like we're we're wired to think that a more expensive product is better just like the payless shoes i don't know how long ago it was might have been a couple of years ago they took all of their shoes and they created kind of a, a pop-up shop and they made it sound really fancy they made it look beautiful inside and they took those same shoes and they might have 10x them if they were a 20 dollar pair they would charge 200 dollars for the same pair 
there and they sold out and then they told everybody who bought everything these are pay less shoes and it's just crazy how price can dictate people's buying behavior yeah they did like a experiment yeah on them and it worked that's crazy it worked that's wild well it's the beginning of january you dropped yesterday january 1st excited about that it was a little bit of a learning curve figuring out how to upload and, and yeah make sure it got everywhere do you have any anything you want to do this year i mean business wise honestly i want to stay consistent with this podcast and i want to get more sales on ebay for like clothing products i guess oh okay you're you're flipping on ebay yeah oh i, I want to flip more items on ebay okay and do that maybe maybe sell some art too sell some of the ai art find a like a consistent way to sell that i tried that yesterday when i was trying to edit the faces of us and i'm not good at it i don't know how to do it i think that's probably the creative side of me i think if you are an artist you know how to write or just get your thoughts across you you could probably draw some great stuff but everything i was doing i'm just like yeah put me in a suit and then it would just really distort my face and yeah it was kind of tough it, it's it's so difficult it just it requires a lot of like research of how the tool works and then you'll you just get better at it over time that's the thing i just i don't want to get better at it. that doesn't interest me yeah it's kind of it's it's like the chat gpt though that intrigues me because i just asked it a couple of sentences oh, it's insane we made it ai is going so crazy chat gpt so many students are using it to do their homework i would do. and write essays that they are coming up with um ai detection tools for teachers to yep. use they're coming up with them yeah but if google had their spam update two months ago when it was supposed to remove ai written content but anybody that had ai written content their sites were practically unchanged and sites like mine got the shaft well i don't think the tools work if all of a sudden you're a d student and you just your reports suck or you just don't write reports to all of a sudden writing what comes out of chat G gpt yeah i mean it doesn't take a detection tool to be like okay you didn't write this because this is actually coherent so i mean if you're trying to go from a d to an a student yeah it's not going to work but if you start out the new season which is semester or whatever that's coming up it's amazing i i wish there was a word counter on there that told us how much because of we, we were just like write a random business plan and this thing kept going for me i used and it i got it to limit the words like once it wasn't down to the word but it was really close i was saying like 500 words 600 words oh i didn't think you could do oh that's crazy yes you even go that crazy with the chat gpt yeah it was getting close it was it was really close to what i asked it for you have to ask it to like keep it short around 100 words and it will you gotta be like nice to it too sometimes or it will literally like it will soft ban you really it will say yeah it will say too many too many uh requests please slow down and it will ban you if you keep asking it too many things or if you like make it do like repetitive work sometimes i absolutely love it so you just want to start something and stay consistent you've already started a couple of things we have the podcast you have you're selling things on ebay so that's another one then you have they has not i got i got one sale and it's it has not been doing too good after that i don't know i want to say it's probably because the end it was the end of the year yeah christmas bond yeah. season and there was someone no was buying tea. the wallet as a gift right so and now this is january and february i don't care i'd actually like to know what businesses thrive in january and february besides uh, salt uh plows snow blowers generators those do well now but everything else else and i mean they're dead months so i wouldn't really expect too much from ebay don't get discouraged keep listing things and it's all it's free if you list it and you don't do an auction right i think a buy it now price it's free I think as long so. as you don't promote anything we try and sell some stuff on ebay uh, for people i was thinking about promoting the art because i was searching for like individual niches on ebay for the art there weren't that many digital downloads so i figured 
you can it, and you're allowed to promote a digital download on eBay. And I looked up like outer space design and like the only things that came up were like a few like really shitty designs. And AI can produce something way better than that in the snap of a finger. So I knew it's that you can make twenty different ones. I just don't know how to get it to do that. And I feel like it'd be worth promoting it for thirty days or whatnot to see if you get any sales. But I don't know how it works selling our art on eBay. Like they may not like that. I don't know. I would assume that's more of an Etsy thing. Yeah, you can do that too, for sure. But if I were to do it, yeah, I'd I'd probably try and hit every any and all platforms, try and find a stock photo uh, photography site, and then upload your image. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to find a application that will take my images and then upload them to every stock platform. But here's the thing: like some platforms aren't accepting AI images, and some are. Yeah. Well, if you were to create that platform and just have two separate categories, one that would accept AI art, and one that wouldn't, and then just be like, do you want to distribute here? Because I got the, for the podcast, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like Ayusha. It's A-U-S-H-A, because I didn't know where exactly do I upload the podcast to? Do I do SoundCloud? And then how does it work for Spotify and all that? This seems like it's got great analytics. I can upload my episode, and then it just kind of clicked the button for distribute, and it went to Spotify, Podcast, Addict, SoundCloud, Deezer, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and then it'll send it to all these directories. So it, it seemed pretty nice, and they had a, a 50% off coupon. That's actually the reason I, I got it for this year. I don't know where I was going with that. I just thought that was kind of interesting. What were we just talking about? <laughs> we were talking about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, we tend to do that. We go off on rants. How far do you think OpenAI is going to go in 2023? I have no idea because I couldn't imagine what 2022 brought. I, I, I just... I... Uh, they went from uh, GPT to just like G- GPT-2, all different types of things in a matter, matter of months. Well, I want, it was... Now they're at chat GPT and it's amazing. Once Dolly came out, it made it accessible for the average person to use just type in a sentence and boom create a picture and now discord has them sure there's facebook groups that have it available there yeah what else could you bring to the public in an easy way all i can fathom is just uh, they got one for podcasts they got one for writing art Uh, music generation too oh no way oh yeah okay music okay i gotta play with that one the best thing is with this ai now you can create a side hustle in about five minutes and you don't really need to do anything you want to write a children's story check out chat gpt and then use the ai version to illustrate it for you and then create a children's book and sell that you could do a digital download you can sign up for amazon kdp make money that way yep music amper boomy d3 net uh dance diffusion they have a fine tuning so you can fine tune an ai model on your own music interesting yeah so kind of like train an ai with your music so if you're already a music creator that would be good for someone like that all different types of ai tools now even for upscaling images say you have an old image or like the polaroid polaroid (laughs) yeah those everyone has those you can upscale those and make them look better if you can get a scan of them or a good picture of them you mean the polaroid polaroid you push the button and it comes out oh yeah Mm -hmm. even if you have one from a long time ago and it doesn't look that good or you have an old photo you can upscale it and recolorize it or you could give it color if it's black and white that's actually what i did too I belong to a photography website on Facebook, and one person put up a picture of their grandfather, I want to say, or great-grandfather from World War One, and it was this just brown, washed-out photo, and I put it through Adobe Lightroom, Okay. and then it just brought out the, the darks, and it turned out beautiful, and then I, I just gotta, it to I got to figure out how to use Adobe Lightroom. I've been trying, but it's, it's so... Uh... I think the best way is to just find pictures, like the picture I have. All I wanted to do was just bring out, because it was washed, it, it just looked like it had gone through the sun. I gotta have you try um, JPEG HD or something. Have you heard of Big JPEG? No. I it, it's that. basically a super resolution image. You know when you have to print something, mm-hmm. it needs to be 300 DPI right. dots per inch mm-hmm. for the printer. So it'll take any image basically and bring it to that and upscale it. So like it'll go from 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels to like 5,000 by 5,000. Yeah, program and 300 dpi what's it's it? an ai upscaler what's it called uh big jpeg and then they have uh, jpeg hd which colorizes it too and it, it works really good ai images when you generate them are relatively small and that's a good way
way to upscale them before you sell them or use them for printing purposes. <laughs> Just go online and use a upscaler like Big JPEG for a quick, easy way. I have to still say that other than YouTube, my favorite side hustle type thing is a content website because it's the cheapest and it's fairly easy to do. For my New Year's thing, I have a content website that I did last year. I still have that. I'm going to keep that going forever because that's at least generating something. Then I'm going to create another one this year, pick a better niche and then go from there. But I feel a content website's still one of the best things you can do for yourself because if you ever want to create a business, you're going to create a website for that business. And if you want people to find that website, you have to be able to find uh, a way to get it searchable on Google. Yeah. So unless you write something to the point that Google indexes it mm. in the top three, you're not going to get anywhere. It may be a lot of work to people. Like it sounded like a lot of work to me and it certainly is. It's not like I am successful with my first website at all. It's just that I am learning a lot and it's not just I'm learning about content websites. I'm learning about like the internet as a whole and how it works on the, on in like the back end of everything with advertising and whatnot and how you write your content and how you word what you write and how it to be readable and you have to figure out the game before you play it. You see how Google indexes things, how analytics works. If you do decide to buy a domain and then have it hosted, I use Bluehost, but you can use anything, just search best web hosting provider. Install, Bluehost has been pretty good. Install WordPress. From there, you can pick out any free theme available, find one that you like, then go from there. The hardest part is learning what to write. So there was a book I had, but basically what you want to learn is copywriting. You want to get people to read the first sentence. And if they read the first sentence, they're more likely to read the second sentence if the first sentence is engaging. You just want people to keep reading the sentences until it says buy now if you're selling a product or click here to try this software. That's another thing going back to your, the YouTube niche idea. Software is a big thing to do reviews on and there's always new software coming yeah, out. So true. used product on picked out, oh, what's today's software? Hey, let me try this website. Do a quick review on it. Chances are you'll be ranking first in YouTube for that because you'll be one of the first people to actually do that. And that's all you really want oh. is to be the first in YouTube. That's a good idea. You're doing reviews in a niche. You find the way to find new products that are coming out in that niche. Yeah, not so necessarily the best. So you're the first one. Because that's just us with tools at the shop. Because then you're ranking for essentially zero competition keywords. You're yeah. going to be the first one. We were one of the first. So if someone finds out about the item and looks it up, they're going to see you. Yep. Just like the Vulcan welder from Harbor Freight. People, I mean, it's actually a pretty expensive uh, piece of welding equipment. Once that came out, we bought it. We did a review on it and we we got some pretty great numbers from it. We still do. But the best one, again, is the rust removal video. But if you say you're not a good writer or I don't know what to write about, say you do the pet niche. Go to this website called AnswerSocrates.com. From there, just type in the topic. So pet supplies, then let it do a, a search for you. But what this shows you is everything that people are searching Google for. Any type of question. So if you don't know what to write about on a certain subject, what do we have? How much do dog supplies cost? How do you organize pet supplies? Wow, people actually ask where to buy pet supplies? Okay, well, you're going to find some pretty crazy questions, but I got about, I'm going to say, 113 different questions, and these are basic questions. Then if you go and do a search in Google, does Pet Supplies Plus hire at 16? You type that in Google, then go all the way to the bottom or in the middle. Now it's where it's related searches, and that shows you other things that people are searching for. So how much does Pet Supplies Plus pay? I would do a whole article on Pet Supplies Plus. I've never heard of them. We just have Petco here. Yeah. But write a whole article on their hiring process, how much they pay, how old you have to be. Then boom. It doesn't matter if you get 50 search results a month from it. The object is to rank high 
and just get clicks. Once you get clicks, then you can get ad revenue from. You don't even have ads. to do a website either. It's like you could do a Facebook group. You you don't even have to write your content. You could have AI write your content today. Like you said earlier, you mentioned products on. I went on there, and the first products on there is called Riz. <laughs> What's that? So, um, Riz is like become a term for like when you're when you're talking to people, like your style, I guess. Oh. Okay, let's look up the... So it's just like how South Boston sounds different than Boston, and how Boston sounds different than Rhode Island, or Rhode Islanders. Like, we all sound all right. different. So, just Riz on away. Urban Dictionary basically means, how good are you with pulling and sustaining women, <laughs> and talking to women, or... Oh, so oh. it's just all to women. Talking, uh, how smooth in general, are like, are you smooth? Are you okay, so, so this product is called Riz, and it adds the world's most powerful AI language model into your iPhone keyboard. So say you want to negotiate with anyone, you want to text anyone, you want to do content on a certain products, right. you can have it right for you on your phone. Like, you don't even need a computer to do work like this today. You could do everything from your phone. Well, you can use ChatGPT on your phone. Yeah. So this is just, does it give you different people to sound like? Like Jasper AI, if you were to use that. Oh, could, for sure. You it, can ask voice to say in the voice of, yeah, Joe Rogan. Okay. But I highly recommend content sites. Google Copyright. There's, uh, I'm thinking of actually doing a newsletter on that, but I'm not sure if I have the time where we're getting into so much stuff, but I want to do a newsletter and then maybe once a week I send out a whole bunch of different advertisement copy for people to write down. Cause I would have to say the best way to learn copywriting is to find some of the greatest advertisements and literally copy them, hand write them down word for word. You'll start to learn how to write like that. That's why I never understood English class. They're like, oh, right. But I would tell them, no, no, kind of copy this chapter, hand write it down, and then write another chapter based on the writing of the previous chapter. Something like that. Because you don't learn by just creating. You learn by kind of copying. As a musician, you learn the scales. You learn other people's music before you compose your own, unless you're a savant. But that's few and far between. Yeah. But you copy other people's stuff. So writing should be the same exact thing just write out your favorite book it'll take a year but i mean hand write the book and then i guarantee you if you try to write a book you'll be writing as if you were that author you will have the same writing style and that's all it takes you just got to be a good writer just like the other greats before yeah that's what scares me about ai it's like we learn by seeing examples and kind of copying in our own way right and that's what ai does on a massive scale yeah on a massive scale and it's just like if you want to get on a deeper level it's like one part of the brain you could so you could say for creating like images and, and decoding images what's in the image oh and then making your own like it may not be perfect but no like, but we're, it, we're... it's better for people who don't have any creativity like you and me yeah this is an amazing tool for us yeah i think we're gonna have humanoid robots like in the future oh absolutely i like, mean fully like they're trying to come out computer made human that will talk to you and interact to you normally. What's that? Boston Dynamics? Yeah, I mean, have you seen their their robots? Oh, it's crazy. Well, in the last 10 years, they've come so far. They can do backflips and shit. Like, <laughs> but before they couldn't, you they'd walk and they'd tumble over. One of my goals this year, there's a, a, a an apartment building in my town, and they don't have a vending machine. And you don't know the apartment building, but it's behind the elementary. Yeah, yeah. They don't have a vending machine there, and my buddy lives there, and I believe they just got bought out and the new owner is around our age so i wanted to talk to him about possibly putting a vending machine in there because if you want to talk about passive income all you have to do is go there maybe once a week two hours empty everything out make sure it's good and then add more stuff and then you're you're good for another week yeah it just as long as it, it works for the time it works yeah. while you're gone yeah it's just um it won't be a ton so i want to get a little bit a vending machine and uh my goal by the end of the year is to actually get one at Foxwoods. If I could get a vending machine at Foxwoods, they're everywhere. But Foxwoods is huge. Just walking from the parking lot to actually the gaming tables probably takes 10 minutes. Oh, you've You don't think they have their own vending machines? No. Because why would they 
they don't care about that stuff. I guarantee you that's all outside stuff. You know, they probably called up Pepsi and Coke for their stuff. Hey, just put in vending machines. But I can guarantee you they're not down to hire somebody to buy all that stuff and then put it in a machine and sell it. No, they're, they have little stores. They have the, the tables. They care about that money because they'd rather put a slot machine than a vending machine. That's true. It's kind of like a mall almost. But those they holes. control all of the gambling shit, and then there's just a bunch of vendors yep. around. Yep. And the vendors control themselves. They're just renting out the spot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I wouldn't know what kind of percentage you'd have to give them, but I can yeah. guarantee you, but if you could it's probably, probably steep. Well, I I don't know about that, but I was thinking you could take your vending machine, and I can guarantee you, you could probably just find a wall, plug it in, and leave it there, and <laughs> nobody will ever know. And no way. I. You know what? Where? I'm where? Not in Foxwoods. 100%. Oh, yeah, just find a wall and plug it in? Just wear an official-looking shirt. It doesn't have to oh, say yeah. Foxwoods. Just wear a pet shirt. sure, but it won't page. last until that one guy walks by and is like, hey, no. when did this get here? Yeah, just and, then, and then ask the, the, the next guy, and then they're like, wait a minute, that shouldn't be there. And then it'll be gone. I don't think they'd notice. But I don't think they would notice you're putting it it in or care I, I, like there's videos of people on youtube today just doing this whole prank where they just walk in with a ladder to some store or some like yeah. vest on and they just get in and people don't people don't care people on youtube have gone into back rooms of like different places and there's like workers in the back room like chilling on break and people will go in the back room and then they'll get there and they'll just like be doing something on the ladder and then they'll stop and be like wait a minute like what am i doing like how do i get out of here I just actually got in this store, <laughs> but it's it's so funny. All you have to do is just look official. That's it. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, 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 it, it's just all how you present yourself, and it's amazing the people you could fool just by putting on an orange vest, just stand in the middle of the road with a stop sign, watch the people stop because you just look official. I mean that it's insane. Well, yeah, yeah. Until they realize, well, it's how long can you keep up with the ruse? That some what... people will do this prank where they go on either side of the road and they act like they're pulling a rope across the road. Oh yeah, or I've seen that. Invisible rope. Or or just on a sidewalk and, and people and walk people over. will stop and get so mad. <laughs> and there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Some people just go by because they know what it is, but oh my gosh, the people who don't know just get so pissed. One of my greatest uh, stories I read within the last five years, Providence Place Mall. There was a, an apartment there in the parking lot. There was a whole apartment Apartment. And it was a, a private. It was a secret apartment that RISD students created. Like there was just a, a hallway or something. They created a door, and they had it going on for three years. They kind of lived in the Providence Place Mall. In the mall. Yeah. It was really in the parking lot and it was just amazing how they set it up. They had their TV in there, a couch, fridge. They had everything in there. In where it was like a room in the parking garage? Yeah. I don't know where it was because they obviously closed it up now. It might have been on the, the lowest level or, yeah, the lowest level. It, it might have been tunneled in. Just go, if you Google it, you'll see the pictures of the place. I think they ended up finding it and then and closing it all down, and they uh, they find the guy uh, a couple thousand dollars and trespassing charges. But it was a really cool experiment for three years, and it actually worked. Nice convenient but, parking. <laughs> but just about think, they probably put on some orange vests, put up cinder blocks, put in a door, and they looked official. Because I, I don't know how you could get away with something like that. Oh my gosh, he constructed it in everything. There's pictures of them dying, laughing, and side on the couch oh yeah see look at those pictures those are wow look at chilling on the couch playing xbox i don't know how I, I think one day somebody just saw the door there and followed it and was like hey this isn't supposed to be here where's the entrance i just thought that was cool that's hilarious and vending machines that's what i want to do this year i want to grow another content website grow this podcast turn this podcast into a, a bunch of content for youtube and all that other stuff yeah get a good amount of listeners 
listeners per month. I don't know what a good number would be, especially for a third rate podcast like ours. I want to say that's probably it. I really don't have high hopes for 2023. I don't care to lose weight or stop drinking or smoking or something. That's just, that's not in the cards. One of the weirdest side hustles I did was probably like uh, 10 years ago. It was me and my buddy. I was working at this hotel third shift and my buddy would come in and he would kind of set up the restaurant next door. One day he he came in and he told me, because I feel like I'm, I don't know if muse is the right word, but I like to amp people up. When people tell me a business idea, I'm like, that's brilliant. You should do that. And then I try and help them figure out how to start, how to get it going. I'm great at starting things. I'm not the best at keeping them going and I'm horrible at scaling them. So that's why I hope this podcast, we keep doing it because I'd really like to learn. We're going to keep doing it. And if you're going to learn how to scale up something, if you can scale up a podcast, I would assume you can scale up anything. So my buddy told me that he had this idea of growing mushrooms. And I'm like, I don't really know anything. No, this isn't the psilocybin mushrooms. These were uh, oyster mushrooms. He wanted to grow oyster mushrooms and sell them to restaurants and everything. Yeah, it's a hot topic today. All the different types of mushrooms that you can have and all of the health benefits from them. Oh my God, shit. Like, Takis and maytakis. Yeah, yeah, I know people who take them and it helps them a lot. Oh yeah, it's just uh, regular old like mushrooms that chaga mushrooms. That that was a big one that he told me to get or, or we should do, but I don't think you could actually do them. The whole thought behind it, I said, I don't. How do you do it? And he showed me pictures of you could drill holes in logs and and put these plugs in them, and then after a year it would start to grow shiitakes, and that log would produce for probably fifteen or twenty years. It might produce a couple of pounds every every season or shiitakes they were maybe 20 or 30 dollars a pound and oyster mushrooms were like nine dollars a pound i said well that's a lot of logs but what he realized is you could take coffee grounds used coffee grounds and you could grow the mushrooms using those i said dude this is genius let's do it he wasn't sure about it he wasn't a person who actually believed he could do it and i'm the i was the hype man so i went over one morning i said okay what are the things we need and we picked out a HEPA filter we picked out petri dishes and scalpels and uh, a pressure cooker because there was just all this science behind it and you had to make sure that there was zero bacteria oh, we yeah doing it. yeah when you're growing mushrooms it has to be extremely clean so we want to make sure that um, when we were doing it especially using something like used coffee grounds we we didn't know hey how to get that many coffee grounds we drank a pot of coffee a day so at you that rate we weren't going to get a lot of them. So what we did was we went to the two gas stations by his house and we told them what we were doing because you, we noticed the coffee station had its own trash barrel. The only thing that would really be in there were coffee filters, maybe the straws. So we told them, look, you don't have to throw this away in the dumpster. We'll pick this up every day. And then we had to sterilize it all. So we'd use a pressure cooker and we'd put it through these mason jars, poke holes, and then we used pellets. We had a whole process. We had it down to the you to a side. You need something for it to grow in, like the right environment. You had to, to grow. Get a spore print. Take the spore print, grow it in the petri dishes with some sort of solution underneath. Then once you saw this white mycelium grow, you knew you were okay. But if you saw blue mold anywhere, it was bad. You had to you had to throw it yeah. away. So we ended up actually throwing that outside and hoping we had enough mulch and compost for the mushrooms to grow in that outside. We were mainly doing it indoors, but you could do it outdoors. With that, we would take that mycelium from the petri dishes, put it in the uh, uh, sterilized coffee grounds, put it in mason jars and then wait to, for that to get all white. And then we put it in, in big bins, seal them all up, make sure it was by a HEPA filter, kind of kept the temperature and the moisture level right. Did actually pretty well with that. And then he, we kind of got bigger into the farm life. We bought a lot of animals and it kind of just spiraled out of there. And then we just focused on animals and we, we left the mushroom thing behind. But I'll never forget, I told him, dude, I, I see this as a thing in Rhode Island. I, I pictured ourselves at the bottom of the Providence Journal, the local newspaper, bottom hand corner, I could see a picture of us holding up mushrooms with a little article describing how we do it from coffee grounds and everything. Since we gave up the mushroom thing, nine months later, 
sure enough, there's another mushroom company yeah, here. Rhode Island Mushroom Company. And they had their picture <laughs> in the exact spot, exactly how I dreamt it up and everything. It kind of bummed me out. I told them, see? Did they talk the about best? coffee grounds too? No, I don't, I don't, think they, I don't know um, if they were using coffee grounds. Okay. Uh, that, that was a whole news. Yeah, I saw one of their trucks pulling out of Smithfield Commons the other day. Big money there. Shiitakes, and, and they just did everything. If you could figure out, I believe it's if you could... Uh, Reese, Rishi mushrooms. No, morels. If you could figure out how to reproduce morels, yeah, you'd be a I don't, millionaire. I don't really believe in all of that astrology shit and whatnot. What's that got to do with mushrooms? But I think that you can birth ideas oh. and like, like there's a, a hive mind, a universal consciousness. Um, I don't really know how to describe it, but I feel like you can birth ideas. Like what you said about the mushroom thing. It's like you pictured yourself having this mushroom company and being the Rhode Island mushroom guy and that didn't that didn't happen for you. you 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 were almost there and then you had complications and then nine months later some company is doing exactly what you imagined and it was it's nine crazy since we gave up it was nine months from there that it was out there and i had sent him a picture of that and i i was just i was so upset but also so amazed because yes you manifest that stuff and have this feeling associated with that manifestation oh you can do anything but it was nine months. That's why I say if we can go a year, if we can do a year on this, I'd be thrilled. That's all I ask for. And if we don't see any substantial growth or anything amazing come of it, the worst thing we did was create something that, I don't know. We can look back on. Exactly. Over the course, we could just be like, wow, look at how stupid we were. Because I guarantee you, when we're on episode 52 and we listen to it. Every episode, episode we look one, back and we're like, oh, man. That was, yeah, it was horrible. No, it was good. Definitely a good learning curve I, yeah. I've already learned a lot now I just want to talk about since I brought up the mushrooms I found that to just be a weird side hustle if anyone wants that um, uh, Paul Stamets Google or YouTube Paul Stamets and he talks about mushrooms and, and how beneficial they are and how the world's largest organism is a mushroom and I'm very... oh yeah there are mushrooms that can be miles long and it's all the mycelium because it's wild around around my trees and I've October, it might happen in your yard, but you'll see all these like mushrooms pop up and they look like brains. Oh, yeah. And those are he uh, chicken of the woods or hen of the woods. It might be the same. It's been a while since I've been in a mushroom, but there's got to be five pound mushrooms and there were about 30 mushrooms. If I actually cared enough, I'd harvest them at the right time and I'd sell them to any restaurant. It's in uh, you, what? Oh, yeah. You have no idea how much money oh, you can make. Micro greens. Drink. That is an awesome side hustle. Oh, that's growing microgreens. You want to try that? I'm thinking about it. I'm not going to buy whatever course oh. I'm on Instagram for. Because oh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, we, we ain't need no course. We just need research. We got to try it. Should fail a few times. Perfect it. I mean, we go ham. I, how, what's your basement look like? Is it like mine or is it actually kind of cleaner? and Kind of the same. It's, oh, really? like, it's old, crusty, unfinished basement. Because if I took all that stuff on the back end, I don't care about crusty. I'll put up plastic. I'll, I'll scrub the walls. I'll make sure it's sterilized and everything. Okay. I'm not sure what you need to. Okay, you need it to be relatively st sterile. You need the air to be cleaned. I wouldn't think it's like mushrooms, though, where no. it spore lands and it, it's bad. You're all screwed. I'd do that. I, I'd start. Uh, I'll look into that this week, and next week we'll have a plan. I'm, I've looked into it. Me and my uh, brother were actually talking about doing it because he's into um, plants. He actually got his degree in ornamental horticulture. No way. So, oh, yeah, he just uh, recently graduated. I've seen the microgreen thing online. I think it's a good idea. What I'd get is a shipping container. Oh. Because I believe the prices have come down on that. Oh, you'd have, to, you'd have to look at the town to see if you could. But then you have to, then you might have to heat that or get solar. I, I can't put solar anywhere in this yard. Yeah, we live in the woods. Yeah, and the south side, that's where all the sun comes from and the trees right there. I, I get no sun. The electric company tried to schedule a visit with us. You got a, you got a river back there? No, well, we got a pond, but that's probably eight football fields away. No power. 
power, you're gonna have to pay for it. No, that's fine. I don't mind paying. It, it can't cost that much. Put up a couple of heat lamps, get a windmill. You could figure out a billion different things. I don't care. But worst case scenario, you put it in the basement. I don't know what it would take or what you get per truck. You get a grow tent. Yeah, but you'd need a bigger grow tent. Like you ten by ten. Yeah. I got the beams. It doesn't matter. I got beams nope. and it fits. Yeah. Really? Okay. I'll have to check that out. But I say we come up with a plan and next week we we think about it and then I'll that'd be cool to all you have to do is probably go to some of the just the got us to where the gyms go to the gyms guaranteed they sell wheat grass and all that yeah I don't know hmm. I know they do that you gotta go to you have to go to the markets you have to figure out I mean not the markets sorry you have to go to re local restaurants uh local like really fancy restaurants that uh garnish all their dishes with these like fancy greens and whatnot and you have to grow those I feel it's and sell to them weekly. I could handle that. Somebody would just have to deliver it, which is you, because there's no way I'm driving anywhere in Rhode Island. And I would, uh, I would love to drive around some fresh greens. Yeah, boom, got a business. I'll go sell in the restaurants. I already got three. I know I'd hit up right now. I think we would have to get a uh, grow in the greens first. Now, a few years ago, I had read this story, and I don't care what anyone says. It's like, oh, I don't know how to make money. If you can't figure out something, then I got nothing for you because this is the easiest time in the history of humanity to make money. There's a woman out of Dorset, which is in the UK. They sell bottles of air. Not like, I don't even know what you would think of when I say bottles of air, but this woman takes a mason jar and then runs through the English countryside and then puts a lid on it and then has sold them to people in China. China's obviously got the most pollution, uh, air pollution and everything, but she sells them for 80 pounds, 80, yeah, 80 pounds, not $80. So I think it's maybe $120. Wow. A jar. For a jar. And she sold. I'm going to start uh, selling $10 air. Who would want Rhode Island air? <laughs> Just get some pictures of Alaska. Alaska and say you're in Alaska and start shipping that air. Well, that's the funny thing because in this article she said, no, this isn't a, a scam. She's not like, I stand in my kitchen and then jar the air. She said, no, she'll go to the English countryside or she'll go to the ocean and she'll run around and try and collect as much of the air as possible or that scent where when you open it, you'll smell different notes like the sea or lavender or some stuff. But it's 80 pounds she say a hundred dollars a hundred dollars a jar and she sold hundreds even if she sold a hundred what's that ten thousand dollars she made ten thousand dollars selling a hundred mason jars <laughs> all right so for 2023 i'm gonna make a website i'm gonna call it fresh ri air you gotta come up with your own i'm gonna take beautiful pictures of rhode island maybe the beach and we'll, we'll collect the air from the beach see there's something there but i think it you, the trick is to make it your road. Like, what if we sell you beach sand and you go to Scarborough and then just jar up sand and put a seashell in it? I don't know. Something really stupid. I find the dumber the idea, the better. I think air is dumber. <laughs> okay. No, I see you and raise you women <laughs> selling farts in a jar. No. No. Google it. Google it. Bath and tub of water. Oh, oh, come on. No. Farts in a jar. Farts in a jar wins. Bathtub water. That's. Yeah. It's just farty. Farts in a jar. <laughs> I've heard of it. It's, it's ridiculous. So, yes. I mean. If you can't make money, air in a jar, air in a jar. But I bet, I bet you couldn't smell it. But if you spend a hundred dollars, what do you get? One smell? Uh, I wouldn't assume that the mason you, jar. You crack it open, get a little, get a little whiff, and then shut it real quick. It's just like in the movie Spaceballs, where he no, he we only smell the jar once a year. <laughs> The president spaceballs the movie, opens the bottom drawer, pulls out a can of Perrier, and then sniffs it because they live in a on a moon or something. And it's just they need air, and I thought that was funny. That's oh just exactly gosh. what it reminds me of. Oh, last thing I wanted to talk about: best side hustle. The film, fairly decent, even semi decent, and math or science or history or English. 
become an online tutor <laughs> because the teacher shortage is real. In Providence alone, I still want to say we're trying to hire maybe 200 teachers to fill positions. That's insanity. And I know it's like this across the country. I assume a lot of people are pulling back and, and homeschooling their kids now. And I remember during the pandemic, instead of just homeschooling your kid, which is kind of boring, a lot of the neighborhood kids would get together and they would actually hire a teacher a day to teach a different subject like one day would be science and they do all these fun experiments and things like that or if you become a tutor or even an online tutor and just do things like that even for elementary school kids I can guarantee you'd probably make a fortune. It'd be a, a decent amount of, I don't know what you're tutoring. Yeah, online like, tutoring and courses is big nowadays. I remember when I had a, what was it, uh, just a private teacher for my trombone playing. It was $75 a session. Oh, I did the same thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did it. Play trombone. Yeah. Did you have a private teacher? Yeah. Was it Jody? Mm, I don't remember the name. Uh, was it a woman? No. Okay. Nope. Yeah, mine was Jody. She was a sweetheart. And yeah. I remember it was probably our last private lesson. Now, I had been playing uh, trombone since I was in fourth grade. And when I was graduating my senior year of high school, it was the last, second to last or last private private lesson. I had looked at the music and it had all made sense to me. I, I had the euphoric moment and, and I told her like, I get it now. Four, 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 three. And then this is how this is supposed to go. Oh, I, I could never understand that. It came to me like a bolt of lightning and I told her and she's like, really? I've been tutoring you for five years, and you just now got it. I said, yep, and I'm never going to play the trombone after this, and I never did. So that sucks. I could probably, man, if I if I got a new trombone and took it out, I guarantee you I could teach people how to play the trombone. I was all right at it, but nothing crazy. Okay, I don't want to say sound bad, but were you in sped band or were you in symphonic? Did they even have sped band when you were in? Did they have two bands? How many people were, you, were in your? band i don't even know was it a lot or a little a little oh my god band was just everybody was in band we they might have had if there were yeah but people you're more, telling me they had two bands because they were too big it couldn't fit them all on the stage so you had to use the stage by the gym and mm -hmm. and we it was only that. behind the wall so i went to that one but we were split up by brass and percussion and miss vantine did the woodwind really you were just separated like that no Everybody in like we had percussion, then trumpets, clarinets, French horn, bassoon, oboe, bass, flutes. We had everybody. I'm pretty sure they split it up sometimes. It was weird. It was like different. It was like a hundred people per class. Oh no! They're... Well, we didn't have that big of a class. Our class was so small. It's in. Oh, but it'd be like all and different. And you could do chorus too. Yeah, chorus. If they had a hundred, we had two hundred or three hundred people in band. Like when there was a band trip, there was nobody in school. Like nobody. I I don't even know why if people went. They might have done a bunk down. Uh, yeah, I feel like the last people did band, but I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, I saw the band this year. There was maybe 15 people in the band. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and our band won awards every year. We I did. Mean, it was insane. I miss Mr. Neves. To this day, I realize that he's now, he was the greatest teacher. And at the time, I hated him because his motto was, good is never good enough. Strive for perfection. That was him every time. So, he was crazy. Band teachers are... They're wilds. They're yeah. wilds. They're nuts. They're, they're crazy. Hey, they're passionate. They are. Now I realize that passion has kind of rolled off on me or rubbed off on me. Well, that's it for this week on Coffee Milk. I'm Mark Laporte. I'm Mitch DiPaolo. Have a good week and talk to you soon.